I don't know where to go from there. How about the Chargers? They fall to five and five. They were five and three. We saw them back to back weeks in prime time, national television. Games they led, games they could have won, games they should have won. They fall to the 49ers. They fall to the Chiefs. This one was flexed in. It wasn't set up this way to have back to back Chargers games. And now they're going to be in that scrum to get to the playoffs. Right now they're on the outside looking in thanks to all the teams in the AFC East. They got some work to do, and we know they're not going to win the division now. The question becomes, can they emerge from that pack of second-place teams that may or may not get in? At least one second-place team isn't going to get in. Maybe three second-place teams won't get in if the AFC East keeps doing what it's doing, Miles. Well, you know, the Chargers are just this team where they're always so close. And it was kind of like that with Anthony Lynn before. And then you hire Brandon Staley and you think, all right, now we're going to get them over the hump. And, you know, when you have this quarterback who can do this on third and 18, and that poor rookie cornerback, I mean, he's going up against Keenan Allen like that. There's there's no good defense for that. Because I'm looking at it and, you know, you see it and it's like, okay, well, he looks in good position. He looks in good position. And then boom. Allen separates and he does that. And then that was a phenomenal throw by Justin Herbert to Joshua Palmer in the end zone there for that touchdown, that go-ahead touchdown. But they just aren't able to hold on. It's always something with the Los Angeles Chargers. And uh-huh. you know, see, that's my line. Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana. It's always something. That's uh, isn't you it? made an unintended SNL reference. I've been saying it all year. It's always something. Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana, another. Another great character that you probably have no idea who it is. You are really dating yourself in this show, Mike. I I don't (laughs) care. I don't care. You know what, though? You know what, though? My technology worked today, Mr. (laughs) Millennial (laughs) Generation Y. I didn't. I I was ready to go. I know you're probably in the chair with five minutes to go today. Like, oh, where's Miles? He's usually. Yeah, it's uh, anyway. Yeah, it's just it's always something with them. And it's funny because people now are doing the thing where it's like, oh, well, you said that Justin Herbert's so good, but Justin Herbert always loses (laughs) to a tongue by lower wins. Oh, no. No, no. I don't want to get into that too much because I don't. But I'm starting to think at some point they're not entirely wrong. But is it because it was more about what they're doing and coaching? Because – 31 seconds. Imagine if we saw Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs offense, 31 seconds, two timeouts. All they need is a field goal to extend the game. We think they're going to do that, right? Yes, we do. Justin Herbert comes out, and I don't know if it was a QB draw or what What the hell is this? Is that a QB draw? Because Chris Jones said after the game, it's one of the easiest sacks I've ever had. So w- what is that? And then the next play, he throws an interception. And it's like he's trying to force this thing into a tight window, and he's moving, and maybe he's trying to throw it away. I don't know, but the dude's double covered. This is not the kind of thing that you want to see from somebody who's supposed to be elite. So I guess I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if this this is the way that Justin Herbert is. But if you're an elite quarterback, if you're taking that step to be elite, then you need to be able to get it done in those situations. 31 seconds, more than one timeout, is more than enough time from the minus 25 to get yourself in the makeable field goal range if you're doing it right. They're just not doing it right. First of all, it was a great recognition, a great play by Chris Jones. I don't know that most defensive tackles are going to grab Justin Herbert and drag him to the ground in that moment because he pops past that. Who knows how far he runs? Secondly, secondly, and look, I, I, I know that the two of vibe is strong. He's playing well. He's got all the pieces around him. He's got great coaching. I think it's safe to say, and I think even, even the most ardent to a defender would agree with me that if you took Tua from the dolphins, and put him on the Chargers, and took Justin Herbert from the Chargers and put him on the Dolphins with everything they have, with Mike McDaniel as the coach, the Dolphins wouldn't be 7-3. and Well, I mean... Dolphins would be 8-2, and and 9-1, or 10-0. and And you don't get yourself in a spot where you're trying to make something happen 
and you're going beyond your physical abilities. The thing that Jameis Winston did way too many times and one of the reasons why he's not playing now. You try to do more than you can. We saw Justin Herbert try to do more than he physically can last night because what am I going to do? You don't even get that point. If you've got Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill and Mike McDaniel and Jeff Wilson Jr. and the defense that they have in Miami, which is very underrated. So I, I, I look at two is two is great. K- kudos, well done, two and on. You you were right, but but even you deep down would recognize if you swap Herbert for Tua, the Dolphins are unstoppable, and the Chargers aren't five and five. Well, look, like I said, there are flashes of that elite play from Justin Herbert. That throw to Keenan Allen on third and 18 is not a throw that most quarterbacks can make. It's just not. You know, that play that he made to get that touchdown to Joshua Palmer was outstanding. And I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't think of Justin Herbert as somebody with a great arm talent, but it's those it's those times where it's nut cutting time, right? Where you have to go and you have to make a play. It's the situations that we've seen time and time again from Patrick Mahomes where he goes and he does it. We're not seeing that yet from Justin Herbert. And I think in this year, he's in his third season. He's supposed to be taking that step to being elite, and he's not quite doing it yet because he's not getting it done in the most critical moments. You know, and it's not the third and 18 is not a most critical moment. It is a very critical moment. You get the touchdown and you go ahead with – less than two minutes to go. That's a critical moment too. But when you get the ball back with 31 seconds and multiple timeouts, you have to be able to get it done then. And he wasn't able to get it done. So I, it, it's, I'm not trying to, you know, urinate on I don't Justin disagree. Herbert's talent. I, but it's At, just, you got to get it done. Yeah. The, the, I had the image of the little Calvin sticker that used to be on the back of every car. Yes. That's the little, what I was thinking of. Yeah. 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 So, uh, well, well said. And until he does it once, it, it has to become a thing. You don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to go win a game with half a minute left. And you need to have that belief. It needs to get to the point where it's just nonchalant like it is with the Chiefs. And that's fundamentally the difference in the game. The Chiefs right. did it when they had to, and the Chargers yes. didn't. Period. Yes. End of story. Yes. End of segment. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.